Thank you so much. And, and let me tell you how much we appreciate you serving on, on this maiden voyage of this building. We literally opened this building today. And uh, our faculty moved in last week, and we didn't quite get the side in. We tried to get that in before you arrived today, so it looked like a finished building. But so if you happen to hear a horn blow or a lights blink or something near the day, just don't worry about it. We're trying to figure out how to operate this building. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit more high tech than anything we've had here before, so uh, we're trying to figure it out as well. Uh, I, I too, I'm a first generation college kid. And uh, you know, we all have our personal stories, and I hope today that since I'm given the opportunity to, to talk with you a minute, that you, you'll let me use some personal references. I have two sons. Uh, both I love dearly. Uh, it's hard for me to believe they both grew up in the same house. If you've got children, you understand that. But one of my kids is an attorney, and he just loves everything in the world that involves history, especially history of our family, uh, history of the region where we grew up. And yesterday, I, I was born back in the day when you were born at home, not in a hospital. And he's always had the address of the house where I was born, but he's never seen it. Yesterday, he sent me a photograph of a sign that said Seaboard Street. That's in East Rockingham, North Carolina. The reason it's named Seaboard Street is because a seaboard train went by. Not only did we live in the Mill Village, we lived in the worst street and the worst house in the Mill Village. But that's okay. His note to me yesterday says, Dad, this is a pretty tough looking place. I sent him a note back and said, yeah, it was when I was born too. I'm glad to see nothing's changed. But growing up in that kind of environment, I look back on my life and, and I think how blessed I have been that somebody cared. Somebody cared. Somebody put their arms around me and said, this little guy's pretty smart. Let's encourage him a little bit and see what happens. Honest to goodness, when I went to high school in the ninth grade, I knew more people who had been to prison than I knew had been to college. Why me? Why did that community put their arms around me and give me the opportunities that I've had and give my brother the opportunities he's had? Within one mile, one geographic mile, there were three families raising tykes about that time. Nobody in any of the three families ever been to college. Nobody even talked about going to college. But somehow, our parents and our Sunday school teachers and our elementary school teachers thought we were special. And they encouraged us and supported us and this is a bit unbelievable. We were all born within a mile, all born in Mill Village houses. Jerry Wallace is now the president of Campbell University. Charles Jenkins just stepped down after serving as interim president of UNC Pembroke for two or three years, and I'm president of Lincoln. How did that happen? It happened because somebody just like you, somebody cared. And somebody said, we don't know where they might wind up, but we're gonna give these three kids a chance to do whatever they wanna do with their lives. That's the happy part of my story about access and success. The sad part is there were dozens and dozens of other kids just as smart, who had just as big a dreams as we did, who never had the chance to go to college. And now that we've get, we're getting close to retirement age, I look back on the life I've lived and the lives that my family have lived compared to what they have been able to do in their lives, and it just isn't fair. It just isn't fair that I have had all these great opportunities and that my family's lives have been changed in so many wonderful ways, and they didn't get that same opportunity. And that's why it burns in me every single day to always say yes when we can to students who are looking for an opportunity. 
We have students who come here every single year and who fail and who flunk out and who go home. And that always hurts my heart. But as their tail lights are leaving this campus, I know that we did everything in our power to give them a chance to be successful. And it's my hope, and it very often happens, that in a few years they come back and say, hey, the light went on. I, get, I need to get a college degree. Or maybe they go to one of your schools to get a degree. But every single person needs an opportunity. Will they all succeed? Heck no. Will any of them be college presidents? God, I hope not, because I love them too much for that. <laughs> but for goodness sakes, don't ever go to bed at night without thinking about what a difference you are making in the lives of young people. Maybe you are the single most important person they will ever engage in their lives in terms of help and encouragement. My brother and I talk all the time. He's the smart one. He went into the insurance business and he's rich and he can put me in a nice retirement home someday and I appreciate that. <laughs> but we talk, anytime we're together, we look at one another and say, why us? Why us? But how grateful we are and what a pleasure it is now for me to be in a position where I might can help one or two or perhaps hundreds or thousands of people here in my career. We're in a wonderful, honorable, and good profession. I congratulate all of you for the fine work you're doing. I know your institutions. I know the leadership of most of them. And I know that you are just as dedicated to your work as we are to ours at Wingate. And there is no more important work in the world. So thank you for what you're doing.